Uh, good evening. We'll call to order the uh, school budget hearing um, for 2023. Um, I guess I will start by just giving sort of a basic breakdown of um, the budget and where we ended up where we're at. Uh, the 2023-24 budget uh, includes 42 teachers, 30 support staff, administration, uh, and approximately, or we're budgeted for approximately 270 students. Um, that includes uh, about 52 students with IEPs and, and uh, educational plans under IDEA. Um, that it also includes the maintenance of two school buildings, um, all the properties associated with that and the technology necessary to provide education. Um, in, addition, in addition to that, it provides uh, vocational opportunities, co-curricular uh, activities, charter school options, um, and it provides, you know, a a, a good educational opportunity for the students of our district um, with small class sizes compared to the state average uh, and um, health, nurse health services, social workers, summer programs um, and opportunities for academic enrichment and, uh, and a number of, of other you know, services provided to the community, including the, um, the food service program uh, and the transportation to and from school. So there's a lot that goes into this budget. Um, the administration and the board has done uh, the best we can to uh, limit, you know, the uh, the increase in the budget this year. Um, everybody feels the squeeze uh, that I think is being sort of felt nationwide, and I think uh, we've done, you know, a, a, a good job of um, maintaining, you know, basically level funding to the extent we could uh, the services, while um, while not raising the budget uh, and to any great amount. So the increase over last year's operating budget is approximately $104,000, which represents approximately 1.3% uh, uh, increase over last year's budget. Um, as folks surely know, uh, that's a, a modest increase uh, when, when you consider uh, where inflation numbers are at this point. Um, part of that uh, increase uh, are, are, are things that are unavoidable, including uh, fuel, uh, heating fuel, things like that, the transportation costs increase. Um, we've also been able to uh, realize some savings in certain areas uh, over the past three years. Teaching staff at the school has been reduced uh, by equivalent of two and a half full-time positions just based on um, district need. Uh, uh, this 2023-24 budget includes a reduction of one additional full-time teacher. Um, and again, that is, um, you know, with, with due consideration for, the, you know, the district's ability to provide the necessary educational services for the students. Um, you know, we don't want to make, uh, un, you know, cuts that, that would hurt our ability to, to, to deliver an education. So, um, but most of the uh, or all, all the cuts have been done through attrition, generally retirements or, or folks moving on. Um, and we find ways that we can um, not fill those positions uh, if, if not necessary. So um, as, as is usual, the overwhelming majority of the budget uh, represents approximately 77% of the budget is um, salaries and benefits. So that is um, salaries and benefits of the staff, administration, uh, support staff, uh, and, and just the folks that work here and that do the work of the school. So um, those budget items are you know, negotiated uh, contract items typically, or, or for the most part, they're negotiated contract items through the unions and are, you know, not, uh, there's, there's not a lot of wiggle room uh, for us to do anything with those. Um, like I said, though, well, we do look for opportunities, um, you know, if, if it makes sense for the district to reduce staffing if, if, if we feel like there's, uh, you know, staffing levels are, are higher than necessary. Um, so those, that's the general points, the, the sort of the, the, the general highlights of the budget. Um, like I said, about a 1.3% increase or thereabouts um, over last year's budget. Uh, there are two additional Warren articles that will uh, increase or, or have an impact on the on the tax rate in the tax setting uh, for this year. One of them uh, is the collective bargaining agreement that is uh, represented by um, Article 7 in the 2023 warrant. So you'll see that uh, 
there's a $183,000 increase, $183,413 increase in 2023-24 and 24-25, another $110,000 uh, increase approximately. Um, so that is on top of the one, if, if that's approved, that would be on top of the 1.3% increase. So um, still uh, uh, looking at, you know, essentially flat funding, the operation of the school to the extent we can. And if the voters approve that, uh, we still had a very uh, modest increase for, uh, in terms of uh, comparing what our, our budget increase or what we're asking the taxpayers to support uh, versus uh, inflation nationwide and locally. So, uh, the other uh, budget item uh, or the other, sorry, warrant article uh, that, that will have an impact on the budget uh, this year is the uh, middle high school HVAC system. And uh, I think Brian has a bit of background on that if you want to take over the floor. Sure. Um, the purpose is to replace the high school heating system as we did with the elementary school heating system. Um, a little bit of info on it just to get people up to speed. Uh, the system in the high school um, was original to the building in 1963. Um, the boiler is still the original boiler. Some parts have been upgraded over the last few years, uh, several years. Um, the end result would make a system that's more user-friendly, um, as with the system that we have in the elementary school. Um, upgrade systems that are pertinent to that that are outdated. Um, there is a pneumatic system down there that is something that doesn't exist anymore. So in the future, finding parts and items that would repair that system are gonna become increasingly difficult. Um, and also this year kind of lined up pretty good um, since we did receive some grant money um, for, in the form of the ESSER grants um, to help offset the cost of this project. Um, it's not a small project. Um, however, utilizing the ESSER money that we have from the federal government, um, we'll be able to offset 535,000 and change of that project. Um, we're also gonna remove 150,000 from the um, end of the year fund balance to be transferred into that to help offset some of the money. Um, and $100,000 from the facilities um, expendable trust fund that we have every year been putting into and, and have that available. Um, it will add $147,000 in general taxation. Um, but by doing that, because the past few years have been so successful on the projects that we have been doing, which ranges around $100,000 to $150,000 a year, be it the floors, um, the roof work, and those projects, we thought we'd put those aside for this year. We're pretty well caught up on those projects in general. Um, so that 147, 148 would be through taxation. However, um, we're not adding those other projects. So it's the same taxation that we've been doing for the past 10 plus years. Um, if approved, I guess the, the project would go into play this summer. So that would get it all caught up. The systems would run together. So our maintenance and department as well as our principal and so forth would have access to those systems um, remotely um, which makes things a lot easier for controlling it and it also being the um, the conditions that we're in today this day and age um, it'll do a lot for our air quality within the building um, and that's about it unless there's questions thank you Ryan. Then, and just to reiterate there's some so important things to note with regards to the, the way that this that, that we've decided to fund this um, this article. So you'll notice Article Three uh, of the warrant. Uh, the total cost of the project is just south of uh, 1.4 million dollars. Um, we are taking advantage of uh, 535,564 dollars <coughs> grant that expires in 2024. So it's sort of a use it or lose it situation. <clears throat> that grant is, um, you know, has specific restrictions about what it can be used for and indoor air quality is one of the things that it, that um, that's allowed to be used for. And so 
uh, this is an opportunity for us to, to replace a very old system and, and with you know overwhelmingly aging components uh, with something uh, much more uh, up to date uh, and to do so while using a significant portion of, of money from the federal government. <clears throat> Uh, the um, the $150,000 from the year end fund balance and the $100,000 from the, the expendable trust fund are, will not impact taxation. So those are that, those are monies that we're not asking to raise this year. The $147,000 is money that we're asking to raise this year through taxation. However, we're doing that in lieu of other projects that we would normally do. So I think our, the only remaining projects that we're working on still is the flooring. Uh, in the high school, we are putting that on hold in exchange for using that money towards this project. Um, in addition, and, and it's not noted anywhere here, we were able to take advantage of additional grant monies that were targeted towards other things to take care of projects this year um, that we would have had to spend money on had, had, we, um, had, had we not had that grant funds available. Unfortunately, those grant funds were again targeted at specific things. I think it was a Homeland Security grant. And so we had to use that grant money in ways that fit what that purpose of the grant was, but we were able to take care of some other uh, um, facilities issues and not spend the money. So we saved a considerable amount of money, I think about $300,000 that we received that we planned, that, we, that has been used or we plan to use uh, on projects, facilities related projects that we won't have to spend money on, including windows, doors, uh, other sort of aging components of the school that that have been uh, some of which have been identified as potential um, security risks. So we're, we're we're working through that, and um, we've been able to sort of check other boxes off off of our to do list in the facilities realm uh, by using those grant funds. So we're working working hard to identify and, and Deb exceptionally hard to identify um, sources of funds that don't uh, impact <coughs> taxation to take care of some of these projects, so that when we uh, we have a big project like the HVAC system. Uh, we're not uh, coming to the towns uh, asking for uh, an overwhelming amount of money. And I think the way that uh, we are proposing to fund this um, makes sense. Uh, and we, we're asking that you support it. Um, those are really the only two big items uh, on the, the warrant, the, the, the collective bargaining agreement and the, uh, the balance of the HVAC system. Um, the rest of them are normal, um, you know, dispersing un, unused funds into trust funds, um, which is what we typically do every year. Um, and so I think at, at this point, um, we'll open it up to questions from anybody here um, about any of the items uh, uh, related to the budget. Question. Sure. Um, Sally Nickel with Stock Taxpayer and Resident. Um, on the front page, <coughs> line two, line zero, two support services. It hasn't been used <coughs> before, and that is 18. Eight, nine in there. Yep. And explain what that is. Absolutely. Um, that, my, my apologies. That is another sort of budget highlight. Um, I, my understanding, I believe that is our portion of the uh, school resource officer. So uh, the board approved the, um, the, let's say acquisition, but the hiring of a school resource officer, some of that is, what's that? It has to go through the, the town approval. The, the town of Lincoln received a grant. It's a four-year grant for an SRO, and they cover 75% of the cost up to a certain amount the first year, 50% the second year, 25% the third year, and then we must um, keep them for a fourth year and fully fund it. Uh, and that is the school's half, if you will, of what the, is not covered by the grant this year, or yeah, this coming school year. So there will be a school resource office. Yes. Well, it has to be approved through with the district and the town of Lincoln's vote because it has to be a link town of Lincoln officer because the school is in the town of Lincoln. So as long as it's approved at district meeting, yes. And in our in the town of Lincoln's um, warrant, it has to be a separate warrant article similar to the teachers union contract in this warrant. Um, so as long as it's approved at the town of Lincoln's um district uh, annual meeting then um yes we will have a sro so it 
since your meeting in Lincoln is before this meeting, if it's defeated there, that will be removed. From if it's defeated budget. there, we can <laughs> make a motion on the floor to remove this amount from the budget prior to voting on it. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I think just to be clear, is it um, that there's 25% that, need, that needs to be covered. Mm -hmm. We pay half and the town of Lincoln is paying the other half. Right, of the 25%. Of the, of yeah. the 25%. So next year it'll be 50, the following year 75, and then the fourth year will be. And that's why, and so that's why it has to be approved by the town of Lincoln because Lincoln is picking up the other half of what the grant does. And we gross, the town of Lincoln gross budgets, it has to do the gross budgeting. And this is just a reimbursement. So the town of Lincoln will be picking up half and 100% or the school district will be picking up because you were throwing the first on who is doing what and when the first year the entire uh, position is um has a 75 percent grant so 25 percent needs to be paid for the town of lincoln and the school will be splitting that 25 percent the following year uh, the grant pays for 50 percent so the town of lincoln and the school will split that 50 percent the third year um the grant funds 25 percent so the town of lincoln and the school will split 75 percent and then the fourth year they'll split 100 percent of it and that's they what it it's splitting what is used at school it's it's hard because the school year isn't a fiscal year but we the town of lincoln budgets for the fiscal year so the town of lincoln will be paying for all of the summer months 100 percent. it's just the school paying for the school day part of it so and there will be an officer specifically assigned to the school for the school um, and only utilize at the town in case of emergencies, dire emergencies, or in the summertime or school vacation weeks, et cetera, to so, cover. This it, might not be the appropriate place to ask this question. So where is a Lincoln officer, and we have students here from Woodstock and families from Woodstock, what is the, <coughs> what would be the language of that? Because at different times and many, many years ago, the resource officer could not assist in the Woodstock area with Woodstock because it was Lincoln funded. So I'm curious if that has changed or if that will still be the same because of jurisdiction. That had to 100% to do with the previous administration at the Lincoln Police Department. I just know that that was a We fact, don't, so. with the, our current chief, we don't. Um, that is not going to be an issue like it was with the previous chief. Okay, thank you. Nobody and said I, that delicately enough. And I think there is a, a memorandum of yes. understanding that is in place between yes. Lincoln Police Department and the school district that I'm sure if you'd like to review that, you can ask the administration. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I, I, no, that's a, a valid concern. Yep. Absolutely. With the, the past issues, that's a valid concern. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Hearing none, I. Oh, wait, I oh. want to. Yep. Yeah, sure. Sorry. No, don't worry about it. Okay, so this, when you started at the top, Jay, you had said that this current budget is for 42 teaching staff. What was the second number? For it's about 30 support staff. 30 support. And how is that different from the numbers from last year, breaking it down the same way? So I, I, I think it's. Yeah, let me, let me just clarify because we we did say we reduced one FTE, but we that's based forty two is based on the current staffing. So it's one FTE year. based on so compared to last year's budget, but right now <coughs> we have forty two. So no, we're not really cutting another teacher. It's already how we're operating today. It's the, the forty when he said we're reducing an additional FTE. Mm -hmm. It's compared to. The current year's budget but we've already reduced it it's based on our staffing today so, so we're not reducing another one so the 42 teachers we have 42 teachers today and that's what's factored okay. in the budget last year we factored in 43. okay so where's this the money from that that was budgeted so it should be one less so there should be yeah and staff. that's in in the, when you look at all of our salaries i mean we did actually have a reduction and you have to look at each line. But when you look at your total salaries, it's based on the current. Last year, we had we budgeted for a certain amount of teachers. This year, we budgeted for the same amount of teachers, but there's, those teachers have changed. We had a big change. When we looked at our staffing at the end of the year, we had a lot of changes in our staffing. 
So that factors into what your actual salaries are now. So there actually were some changes in that, you know, most of it was reduction in the actual cost of those salaries. But as far as positions, we have 42 teachers today and that's what's in our budget. Last year we budgeted 43. So we're not reducing anymore from where we are today. We're reducing from what we had in the budget, but that's not. But yeah, and that's why- is the same numbers as well? Yeah, it's based on the current staffing. Yeah, and the benefits of the current staffing. But we're always comparing to last year's budget. Okay. And what happens to enrichment? Is it zero line? Um, where, like the robotics club and those sorts of things, where, where do they come in on the grants? Grants. We're using okay. grants right now. Okay. Yeah. So there's no money for enrichment? Not in, in our general budget. fund. Right now, that's coming out of Title IV monies. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Yes, ma'am. Pretty boy, good stuff. Um, if you have a zero amount in enrichment and grant funds dry up, we'll say for like robotics or some other club, then you can't spend money in that block, is my understanding. Or as if you had a dollar amount in there, then you could take money from other parts of the budget and spend it in that. So good point. maybe. I know I, I believe robotics yeah. is somewhat popular. Mm -hmm. I know my, mm -hmm. my grandson is very happy in it. Um, maybe you should think of putting a small dollar amount in there because grants can come and go. Mm -hmm. And then you start this mm -hmm. program, um, I think it would be too bad to have to lose it because of grant grants. That's a good point. It is a good point. You can't spend anything there if there isn't any money there. Exactly. And you can overspend it if you need to, as long yeah, as it's a line item. Because you can pull money from other parts of the budget. Correct. Right. I mean, you, you can overspend that line. Zero right down the line. So you can't spend right. anything and call it. No, that's a good call. That's a, that's a good good catch. <laughs> I mean, yes, there are grants. And it's, it's almost like you've done this once before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's a good catch. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Make the motion to get there. So there are other lines as well. Um, staff health. There are other zero um, lines as well throughout the budget. That was for bus drivers. Physicals. We don't. And we don't have them anymore. Them okay. Private tuition. Uh, well, that's within a function area. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So you're okay. Um, unemployment. When you when when they talk about moving budget lines, you're looking at the major function on the first two pages. Okay. So that she try. I mean, we don't have anything right. under twelve seventy. Okay. We have stuff under twelve hundred. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Cover. Okay. So you can't really overspend a. Gotcha. Major function line. Yeah. Gotcha. So what, from your perspective, what amount needs to be in there in, in order for us to, is it just any amount? I mean, you can put a dollar in just to have a dollar in. You can put a hundred, you know. Yeah, um, but it just has to be some amount in order to yeah. preserve our ability. I mean, what are the right chances now, we may have to spend it this year? We, we have probably at least another year of the Title IV monies that could go towards that. And after that, I'm not because you know, those grants come out they're actually two-year grants right now mm -hmm. so we could put a dollar in there and be fine next year we may have to put in more yeah do you need a motion for that well i think when you guys yeah, approve the final budget you're going to add that just to add your it dollar. In yeah we okay. can so we can do that so at you, the meeting after, yeah at the regular board meeting okay good. Well, good catch judy any other comments or questions all right uh hearing none then i i will take a vote to adjourn the budget hearing so moved thank you tammy sure. thank you joe all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed abstentions and that motion carries and we are adjourned um, now call to order the regularly scheduled or somewhat irregularly scheduled, but scheduled <laughs> school board uh, meeting.
Uh, first item on the agenda is the budget for one articles. Oh, sorry, approval of the school board minutes from last week. I did have something. I think most of the Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Um, page three. Um, under the principal's report, the one, two, three, four, fifth. Um, Mark Bourbonneau down. John Halligan. It says John H A one one I G A N. Your computer yelled at you there for a second. <laughs> you see it? Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. That's all I saw. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor of approving uh, with that amendment or that correction? A correction. <laughs> Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? The motion carries. Um, next up is the uh, correspondence. Yeah, no. not, not receiving any. Uh, business administrator's report? Um, yeah, just a couple of things. The next couple of weeks, well, there's manifest for tonight. Um, and then next week, there's no meeting, but we'll be running payroll. So we'll, we'll send out an email or, so you can at least, if you can't come into the office, you can at least look at the um, check register. You'll have the budget that needs to be signed as well. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. it. Well, that's my next thing. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. and, then, and then during vacation week, we'll probably have some. <coughs> okay. So just so you know, I might be sending out emails for approval to keep that moving. Yes, so my next thing was, first of all, warrant articles. As you notice, I gave you a report that looks a little bit differently than our normal. We used to do our warrant articles, and we do in the beginning, put them in Word. But once we get to the DRA system, and, and the town of Lincoln's look the same way, and I've talked to other schools, and once you put all the information in, it spits out your warrant. And so it's a, a nice uniform um, form here. It spits out your warrants, and it spits out your budget, the MS-26 form that also has to be signed. So I just wanted you to know that we're going to use this new format because why do we mm -hmm. make the effort? Right. Yeah. Um, so yes, once we make the changes tonight, I will go back in, rerun this. It will also spit out a new MS-26 form that, and then it won't say draft anymore. And then we'd like to have this signed before um, we need to post it sometime during the vacation week. So we'd like to probably get it signed by next week. Mm -hmm. So we'll send out an email <coughs> so it's ready to come in and sign. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. McGinn, Superintendent's report. Okay, there's uh, really not too much uh, this time around. However, on your, um, we do have things on the board action that we're gonna add a couple more things that need to be, but other than that, and you have, you have a couple of you know, committee reports that are um, included in the um, packet from last week that occurred. So just to give you an update on that, and that's it. And Mr. Pribbin now, principal report. Right, thanks. Um, I just wanna give a big shout out to um, Aaron Bell and Mary Steady for putting together this function. Um, that's going to be happening tomorrow night um, <clears throat> for adults. And again, we welcome all adults in the community to come take part in that John Algen presentation. Um, we'll be doing that tomorrow with students 5 through 12 at 1 o'clock. And then the evening, 5.30 to 7 in the high school gym. And we're looking forward to having as many people as we can. Uh, also, I know you have the reports in front of you. I just wanted to congratulate the Boys and Girls Ski Teams for the wonderful job that they've done. And um, Dylan Modzlewski for um, winning the championship it was mm -hmm. awesome. And the mm -hmm. girls having a great, great show. Um, and then the Winter Carnival might not have been on there as well. We are um, back at the camp this year to be um, doing activities there. So we're excited for that and thanking them for having us. That's about it. The camp staff is excited that the school's coming back too. So, oh, good. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Mark. Um, committee reports. Did we policy met this evening. We did long, long, hard long <laughs> meeting. Four seven minutes of my life. I'm telling you. <laughs> we um, went over the um, policy D, and then we discussed the last meeting and made the changes. I say we. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Sharon that made those changes and did awesome as usual. Uh, and then there's another one, <clears throat> the HIV 
triple A is just the law change that we educate them <coughs> to age 22 instead of 21. So that just needs to be changed to an age. And those will be going forward to first reading at the next um, regular meeting. So no, nothing to approve and nothing to either <coughs> approve or move to second. No. Um, it, it, with the computers we talked about last week, is there a time issue? Is that something that needs to be done sooner than later? Does it matter? It probably will happen after vacation right. at this point. Okay. We're working on a meeting with the senior center and setting up. Okay, good. Some stuff. So, excellent. Perfect. All right. Uh, business requiring board action. Staff nominations, resignations. All right. There's no staff nominations recommendation. Okay. Um, I see the uh, Sergeant Family Pemmy Historical Society and Kinsman Scholarships. Yes. <coughs> so we have the, the Sergeant Family Pemmy Historical Society is going to Mihaly. Mihaly. And he is attending uh, PSU. Nice. So we need to vote on that. I'll make a motion that we award the Sergeant Family Penny Historical Society scholarship to Mihaly. Thank you. In the amount of $250. In the amount of $250. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Joe. Um, any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Oh. I just want to say, just to clarify, they've already been awarded the scholarship. Yeah. So this is just to expend it from the Disperse. trust funds because they're in trust funds. Okay, so okay. I'll make, make a motion that we expend that. Yes. yes. So, Already awarded okay. scholarship. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? And then that motion carries. And Kinsman? Uh, the other one is to approve the expenditure of $1,000 to Ethan Wargo, who is also attending PSU. I'll make a motion that we expend the $1,000 Kinsman scholarship to Ethan Wargo. Second. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Joe. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Abstentions? And that motion carries. And congratulations to Mahali and uh, Ethan. Uh, and the last issue was the uh, vote on the budget and Warren articles. So um, I think, based on the concerns expressed by Ms. Boyle, it makes sense for us to amend that budget item to include some amount of money uh, in the event that we lose grant funding that we still can have an enrichment program. We don't need a motion for that, do we? Just add the dollar in? Well, you're going to need a motion to the final. approve Proof that Warren the... article. Okay. Is there a... So that line item. Is it? It's not a Warren article, is it? Well, it's a bud it's right. budget Warren article. You, add need it. Oh, all of, you need to make your final recommendation right. got it. on all of the, yeah. based on the input you got at the budget hearing, yes. <laughs> you need to go through each Warren article and make your final recommendations okay. um, with that change noted. If that's, that makes sense. Okay. So, oh, we already voted on these. You did, so I. So I mean, can we just on, just address the ones that we intend to change? I mean, I think you might. I think you should go through each one. You don't have to read them. You just have yeah. to say, um, the, well, we'll have to yeah. the first by and all of the three. So it's basically three. I and mean, usually, when the budget committee, when we had a budget committee, they would go through each one and do their recommendation. Yeah. You, you had already had your recommendations, but the, the final, again, it's. Right. Okay, your final recommendation after budget hearing based on any input. So just to have it noted. So, I mean, I guess we could do a um, we could do a motion to accept you know, all of the Warren articles as previously presented, except for number six. Number six. So, no, so articles it. one, two, three, four, five. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Did you make that motion? I, I didn't. But I'll make that motion. Did we approve those, all articles, but six? Um, I'll second. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, Tammy. Any further discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, <clears throat> questions, and that motion carries unanimously. 
Do I, I'll make a motion that we amend to Article 6 to read $8,829,490, adding that $1 to the enrichment line, which was $1,270. I'll second. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, um, Any further discussion about that? And a dollar really makes a difference. So. Huge. Yeah. Well, that's well, the way we can extend out of that. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I know it makes it easy. So, so, do we need to? We don't need to do anything re regarding the actual budget itself. Just fix that number. Yeah, you okay. just did that. Just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions, and that motion carries. Oh, this is the letter D I had mentioned earlier. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. In your blue uh, folder, you had two policies, JJE and DFGA. And I'm just asking you to look at this. The, the um, one of them was to circle at the top. This one paragraph. It's a combination of fundraising regarding fundraising, and there is a fundraising request on Monday, February 20th, for the girls of summer. And they would like to raise money, have a pizza um, event, and um, have donations during that time to raise money so they could use a hut during the summer instead of sleeping out in the wild. So, uh, they would be <laughs> so they're requesting if they could do that. But those were the two policies that I worked together to, to get the uh, they had request. a couple of years of really wet, wet hiking, yeah. so yeah, they haven't I had too many drugs. No, so $150 I, a person, yeah, yeah. So, they're hoping to raise the funds for that. So, the we just asked for the it's not really so that they could it's right. I mean, it's, it's yeah. not like a traditional fundraiser. Just... Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, it's just a yeah. Um, but fundraiser. what's the what's the fundraising committee? You know what what is, has this been? The policy requires it to be run by the fundraising committee first. Well, right now it's just been run by administration. Okay. Yeah. No, so. Um, it's and is there? Traditionally, the fundraising committee was the, the, the principal and then the class advisors and whatnot. Right. Mm -hmm. But this isn't specifically a class thing, so it doesn't involve a class advisor. So it's just kind of a, a weird right. This one. is kind of a program. Sure. Right. Right. Yeah. Which we don't typically fundraise. Right. You know, yeah. people now you see, again, the GoFundMe for things right. like that. Right, right, right. That's why we have that crowdfunding policy. What happens yeah. if they don't make it? What do you mean? There's enough money? Yeah. They need and then dollars. they'll do another fundraiser, I'm sure. Yeah, they probably. Yeah. yeah. No, I know that, but if they don't make it, right, and they get to so be September, it and or it'll stay in the student activities fund. They can't spend it without right, approval. Right. From, yeah. Even if they raise it all, they still can't spend it without right. approval of the administration. Yeah. So, right. yeah. I, I guess my my only concern is that I don't think the school board, based on the policy alone, can approve it. Well, DFGA on the second page, the part she highlighted yeah. says that we have the authority to. Yeah. So is that the board has the authority to approve the campaign that seeks a dollar and excess <coughs> five hundred, and they're assuming it will be. How much do they intend to raise? To you? I mean, I would think That's all of it. One hundred fifty dollars times twenty kids. That's what they dollars right. or something. So I don't know. Yeah. Depends on how many they're right, yeah. right, right. I guess my my um my only concern is that this does I don't this seems like more like a traditional fundraising thing rather than a crowdfunding operation. Yeah, yeah definitely. Right. And yes. so I don't know that the, the crowdfunding policy applies under the circumstances. Um, and that it should be the it should be the, the fundraising committee that is looking at this thing whether or not they want to do it. And I mean, how often, uh, this might be the first time that this has come up since I've been on the board, um, that, a, that a club is looking to fundraise as opposed to classes. Mm -hmm. Usually it's classes doing fundraising. Yeah, but this isn't no. really a club because this is a school right. activity right. Right. budget. Right. That's the right. biggest difference with it. Yeah. Well, we did FBLA. The FBLA fundraisers were approved by the principal. It was, there was no committee, there was no yeah. approval of the board, yeah. there was no nothing. They had the wrapping. <laughs> so that, that's kind of considered yeah. a club. Is that all right. through the student activities right. accounts? 
Right. This doesn't go through the student activities accounts. It's a it's a, a program in our budget, mm. and that's the oh, biggest difference. Gotcha. And, and again, it's like it's like when when you have the GoFundMe pages, you know. Yeah. It's first of all, it's it's there. We have that policy to yes, we can allow that, but we got to keep it under control. Sure. So not every class can go out mm -hmm. and, and do a fundraiser, whether it's online or pizza for the people. Sure. And and that stays under control and someone's kind of monitoring that and, and the school is aware of that that's mm -hmm. going on so i think mm -hmm. that's really the intention but individual classes athletic teams they don't fundraise by themselves mm -hmm. right it's the gotcha it's funded by the school not for the activity yes. fund. so makes a difference are they looking for us to approve the general fundraising of the project or the fundraiser <coughs> the fundraiser the fundraiser to so, that one. so in the event that they don't reach that number, the fundraising dollar at the pizza party, mm -hmm. they we're going to have another request to say, theoretically, you raise a thousand dollars. We want to get to three thousand. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Theoretically, yeah. And until they come back with the number that they need, and we approve fundraising up to X dollar amount for this particular project. Oh, yeah, if we needed to do it a second time, that's a good idea. Yeah. But I still think so that it doesn't go on forever. Like, you, like right. you, they, they're approved to raise X amount of dollars. They can't go beyond that amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. There's a time frame to raise that amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. But don't you think there should be some, you know, some governance, but awareness of what the fundraiser is? Yeah, we're kind of limited on time for that. If wanting to do that on the 20th, I kind of agree with you because right. just to get that word out to whomever and to try to cater towards people who are visiting, I don't know that that's necessarily right. a great sales model. I don't know. I, I don't think there's a lot of time to get it done either, but yeah, mm -hmm. that's what they were hoping to do. Maybe they can so I, Generally, I, I think I personally, I support them trying to raise money for the program. Instead, I just, I get concerned if they don't get there and then... Mm -hmm. Come back to us and say, <coughs> what they do with them? On the other side, here, if they are super successful, mm -hmm. where do you tap it? Because it mm -hmm. has to be tapped. It can't now become, well, but we're going to get a hut and a new sleeping bag. <laughs> <laughs> but it has to have, a, it has to have. Yeah, and I, and I don't necessarily, I don't know that that's going to be the issue. I think the no, issue would, would then be like, now the soccer team wants to fundraise because yes. they want to go to a tournament, and now the band wants to fundraise because they want to go to a competition. and and I, and what's you know, that's, that? I, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's just not something yeah. that we've ever done. Right. So before we gotcha. jump into like having every, you know, sort of group in the school mm -hmm. start doing outside fundraising, which, you know, I think we're a small community. Anytime there's a fundraiser, it sort of waters down the pool for everybody. And so that's why I think this, the classes are limited to what they can do in a certain amount of year. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And so, I mean, if we're asking, if, you know, if the school's putting their hand out or some club or some organization in school, you know, sort of that impacts the community. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I would be concerned more that we're sort of opening the door to something that hasn't traditionally been allowed or done. Do you think this is something they're going to ask for in the budget next year instead of trying to fundraise for it? I didn't, I didn't say anything for that. No, I don't no. see that happening. I just think that this is an opportunity that someone sure. came up with and said, why don't we try it, you know, to see if we could do it. That would be nice. So. Mm. And the ability was there, you know. Yeah, absolutely, pizza. absolutely, and it's a good opportunity for them. Mm -hmm. Let me try and do the thing next week. On the twentieth was the date that I got. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll make a motion. We approve their fundraiser for Monday the twentieth. Their pizza, girls of summer pizza fundraiser. Second. Thank you, Danny. Mm -hmm. Is that you, Ashley? Second. Yeah. Um, I guess my only concern would be that I don't think that we have the authority to allow that under the rules currently as it stands. So you think the committee? I think the committee has to do it. Okay. So I would, I, I mean. Well, right now the committee is Mark. <laughs> well, I mean, it, so go for it, Mark. No, the problem is our, this is what our rule reads, right. right? All such fundraising activities require prior approval from the fundraising committee. The committee shall consist of administration, faculty, students, and board representation. Shall means Child's mandatory. That's so not we need to fill on a fundraising committee. So formally. So if there isn't one already, you know, there there yeah. we yeah. we yeah. sort of need one, mm -hmm. and they're the ones that need to approve it. I don't I, under this policy. I don't think that we have 
the authority mm -hmm. to unilaterally okay. approve that request. And so I, I would agree with that one. However, if you go to the following one, I know, but it's not crowdsourced. It's not crowdfunding mm -hmm. in the in the in. Yeah, the definition is, I mean, crowdfunding or on other forms of online fundraising is neither one of those. See, this one also addresses the freshman, sophomore, junior, senior classes, homecoming, things that are not in the budget also. So it's it's kind of a, a gray area, a catch-22. So know? if the board is saying that a committee needs to make the decision, we can I, go back to the committee. I mean, I, I, I just think that that's what our policy can, I mean, if- But that's gonna tie their hands for the fundraiser, this fundraiser, right. which they, it's a fantastic opportunity well. and I don't want that to happen. But I don't think it'll tie their hands. If we've got an administrator, we get Heather, uh -huh. there's your faculty, student. you grab a student yeah. that takes the part in it and one exactly. board member shows yeah. up, that's, yeah. it's all it takes. Yeah. Like, I don't think we're trying to build a huge thing and schedule yeah. a big meeting. It's more just getting the four people together to make right. that agreement. Right. Right. And that committee needs to be consistent, right? Like, it's not just four. Well, I will volunteer to be on the fundraising committee and I can yes. be at school at eight o'clock tomorrow morning to get it done. In, when oh, when the, okay. the band or when the soccer team or whatever right. comes with it, it's the same Committed. group of four people right. that is yeah. reviewing. I can do that. The crowdfunding one can't work because it requires written authorizations and proposals. So you take that one out of the equation. I I um I think that it's it's doable to to get and it doesn't. I mean, it can be done by email. You know, that group doesn't have to meet in person. You know, it doesn't say anything about that. So I just, I would, I think that we should follow our own policies. That's, all. That's, fine. That's fine. It's doable that way because we yeah. can do it tomorrow as long as the rest of the board is okay for me to be on the fundraising committee. Right. I'll nominate him and him to be hey, part you, of the committee. You can any committee you want. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Get the job done. Uh, there is a motion on the table though or do we want to vote on that or do we want to i will withdraw my motion okay. all right um new business well we did have two uh i might be on the continuum uh, because we had two uh situations i just want to clarify not situations but but uh for the emergency days i just want to clarify to the board mm. yep. what we're doing so for the emergency days uh we presented to the staff that the teachers the uh, professional development hours for those days. So mm -hmm. they can um, do professional Those are development. the two broken pipe days. Right, mm -hmm. okay, correct. Uh, the snow days, you have one uh, school Friday. runs on a Thursday and these are Friday. <coughs> so they could, the Friday would be a, a makeup snow day. Mm -hmm. The other day could be March 13th, the 20th and the 27th as what was recommended by the board one day a week that's a monday mm -hmm. so monday the 13th monday the 20th monday the 27th have an extended day now, that would be the other day if the kids go to school on that friday the whole day friday the children's hours are covered correct it's just the staff that isn't covered with their oh so there's two contract. snow days right but the the children could go to school on that friday and be done they could be covered they would as far as the state is concerned for requirements for the school the school hours they but, could have, have that covered. It's it would be the staff's contracted days that wouldn't be covered, correct? Emergency days. Right. For the days snow days. Kids are. For the so snow the days. kids still need one extra snow day. The to emergency make up. days, the kids' hours are covered through that. Yeah. Oh, the pipe days. Okay, yes. okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that sounds like a, a much better proposal than than I think what the so. I think so. Two weeks in a row, three days in a row. I mean, we're providing the last So what hour. were the days again? Tell me again. It was the 13th, the 20th, and 27th. And, and we'll be providing snacks for everybody all the kids. It was a two hour extension? Uh, it's an hour and a half. And so they would four. have activities planned. And, and Until like, 4 p.m. Yeah. No hardcore the, algebra or anything. Like and buses, <laughs> and the, Yeah. If everything will just run as it would be 2.30. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It's a long day for the little guys. It just really is. Too, if they yeah, they could do. I mean, they could choose not to. You know what I mean? They could parents okay. could come pick them up or we could, you know get them home or whatever. I was thinking more along the line. Their staff is only supposed to be here for X amount of hours. And right, well, it's, it's same same as what they the need to make is. up the same. Right, they have to make yeah. up the same days. Yeah. What about yeah, they don't. program? They do because they weren't here those days. So they what's that? Children that already have programs that go after school. 
So yeah. I don't know what these days are, but say but they're Lego, Mondays. So robot. we don't, we're all set. Yeah. So we're all set for those three Mondays. March is the only month in which you do not have, you know, except for your, you know, your robotics club, but that's on Wednesday. So there, is there any reason to moving us to April or May? Yes, there is a reason because starting in April, you have all your sports come up again with baseball mm. and all that baseball. stuff. And that's when you run into your interference with that. That's when we've done it before, we've done it with the three days, mm -hmm. you know, and it's worked out. So I, I like the, the one day a week. Mm. You know. It's better than three days as well. Right. Now, yes. say the 13th, if we decide to pick our kids up at 2.30 and take them skiing at the camp instead of it's not going to, they don't have to come back another day. Maybe. I don't like that answer. <laughs> no, they're your children. You can pull them out. That's, That's right. true. <laughs> of course. Okay. We can't keep I don't think the tank will be open longer than that, but we yeah, might so be able to get the 13th in. We're getting snow children snow that aren't here those days. It doesn't affect them because the school carried on. I'm sorry? Children that aren't here those particular days no, would not be affected. That. Doesn't affect that. No. Okay. No. So I know children that won't be here. You can't just wave that day. Huh? Children that aren't there are 13. So if they're not there to make up the day, they still should, they still are going to receive credit Four and for that day. Hours. Yeah, it's the same as any other thing. They call for the, they call in and get an excuse. Let's be an excuse. Yeah. Is that something that you need board approval for, or is that, are you just letting us know that that's what the plan is going forward? I would like board approval for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was in the discussion of the, the faculty? Has there been discussion of this? And there has been. It has been mentioned to faculty. I don't know if it, it yeah. hasn't been discussed with faculty. <laughs> it was on the last staff meeting. I know that middle high school, and then I'm, um, the, um, Jason was supposed to talk with them at the elementary. And are we talking about the snow day or the the snow day probably wasn't addressed. The it, was day, the day. Day. it was the elementary day. day that was addressed because we didn't gotcha. have we didn't have the conversation with the offer of the snow day. And there's no way we could just wave that and still get by with the requirements of the students in classrooms. I mean, I know it doesn't cover the teacher contract, but if if, if we say no, we don't want to do it and we don't want them to go to school the following Monday, we don't want to make up that one day. Are the kids still okay as far as the state of New Hampshire Department of Education is concerned? I, mean, I would have to check on the number of hours to see. If you're I'd like to ask you to do that before do we that, make yeah. a vote. Um, I, can, I can certainly check on the number of hours. Because as far as the, the one teacher contract day, it's, it's one day and we can deal with it somehow, even if they do more, another day of, of continuing education or something. It's, I hate the kids going to school. The high school kids, middle school kids, they're a little more resilient, but I'm thinking of the little guys. I've got three little ones, okay. or four little ones in school now. So it's, yeah, I can't see Thor in here till four. I just can't, or Charlie for that matter. Okay, so for the emergency days, how's that with the uh, professional development teachers? I am all for that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right, that's fine. I'll, I'll take that as a, yeah, no vote. I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank we you. We don't have me. to go on with the other one. I, I'll just find another way. Either that or, I mean, if, like Tammy said, if we could just find out if, if there is another way. And if it doesn't do work, it. then we'll yeah. readdress it. Thank you, though, for, for your efforts and coming up with creative ways yeah. to figure that out. That's yeah. fantastic. Hours, didn't the hours worked in the past, whether it was last year or the year before. We avoided, we avoided this. Last Probably year, because of hours, you yeah. would do you would go with situations, oh, and then um, okay, yeah, yeah, you did have enough hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah the kids. Well, I think the, 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 the issue is we have two snow days now and the two pipe right. burst days. Right. Right. Four days. days that we're if it wasn't for the pipe burst, the or the snow days, count. one of the other would be covered by the hours. Oh, that's yeah. it. Goes against the hours. Well, the takes takes up those hours. Yeah, because you still have to report how many. Right. Not really Thank okay. you. Thank you. Um, anything else? Um, no, that was it. Okay. Um, I don't see any students or staff tonight. Any further comment from the community and the board agenda items? Yes, ma'am. I um, would like I, kind of to address some of that with the hours. Um, 
because it, it feels like, you know, the teacher contract definitely should be followed. But when you look at your school calendar, you have snow days built in. So when you're asking families to plan ahead and not schedule time on your snow days, I don't really understand why the last two meetings have had so much discussion about making up days when they're already built into a calendar that people are already putting time aside to look at and instead of extending. So you're looking at like the ASP program, you pay whether your child is there or not. So whether, when they normally go at 2.30, you head it over. Kids have dance classes. So you can say that the school doesn't have extracurricular at the elementary level in March is an empty month, but it really isn't because we have a lot of families who do additional things, such as my great niece's little dance lessons that she goes to. She would be leaving school on those early days, those late days. She's headed to dance. You're paying for that. There are kids who do, you know, so they have pride. There are lots of extracurricular activities that these kids do. We have a bunch of girls in fourth grade, or several girls, that are going down to Campton and doing an indoor soccer program on those days. So I don't really think that um, extending the school day till four o'clock makes a lot of sense. You already have kids in a robotics club to then say other kids get to do something. Well, now you're asking for planning. Where's the money coming from for the materials of planning? You said last week's STEM. Okay, that's great, but where's the money coming from for those supplies? Um, and then the creativity to go into it and not knowing the numbers of how many kids would be participating, et cetera. So I just think if you have a calendar and you've built your snow days in, use it. It makes sense to me. And the teacher contract, you just work it. I mean, grades close on the very last day of school this year. But there's nothing built in to have time to work on your report cards from a teaching perspective. So that means my grades have to be in ahead of time. So that's extra time already to figure out when. When last year we reported the time without students to be here to work on budgets, to work on preparation for the next year with class lists, looking at data, we did some data dives. Um, that makes sense to me, those sorts of things. We come back the next week, it's already built in. None of us have made, well, we shouldn't have made plans. We've got that week just for one day. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, uh, hearing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So make a motion. Second. <laughs> thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, Sammy. All of your favorite things by the side. Aye. Aye. And we. Thank you, Brian.